Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, July 5th. Thanks for joining us. It's already starting to heat up 80 degrees already. We're expecting triple digits today, so we'll check in with Justin a little later on. Right now, it's time for a look at today's 9 at 9. Island Park police have arrested 22 year old Robert Cremo III. The suspect, they say, opened fire from a rooftop on spectators at a 4th of July parade. Authorities say he was taken into custody after a chase ended near Lake Forest, Illinois. At least six people were killed and more than 30 were hurt in the shooting. It's been one week since 53 migrants died after being trapped inside the back of an 18 wheeler. And a growing memorial is honoring their lives with the names of those victims added to the display. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is expected to share an update later today. Custodial death reports in the case of the Uvalde school massacre shooter have been posted to the Texas Attorney General's website. Three reports were submitted by the Uvalde Police Department and the Uvalde and Zavala County Sheriff's Offices. The Zavala County Sheriff's Office reports that one of its off-duty deputies assisted with the killing of the shooter inside Robb Elementary. Police in Denmark say there is no indication a deadly mall shooting in Copenhagen on Sunday was an act of terror. Three people were killed and four wounded. Police say the 22-year-old suspect will be charged with murder. At least one person is dead and thousands have been asked to evacuate New South Wales, Australia after torrential rains have caused massive flooding. 169 evacuation orders have been issued across the state, impacting at least 32,000 residents. Government officials say the situation is life-threatening. Today, President Biden will award the Congressional Medal of Honor to four Vietnam veterans. The recipients are Staff Sergeant Edward N. Kenishiro, Specialist 5 Dwight W. Birdwell, Specialist 5 Dennis M. Fujii, and retired Major John J. Duffy all served in the Army. Medal of Honor is the United States' highest military award for valor. NATO formally begins the process of ratifying membership of Sweden and Finland into the alliance today. NATO members will formally sign the Protocols of Accession. The Secretary General is calling the start of the process a good day for Finland and Sweden and a good day for NATO. There are new hopes that inflation may be peaking. Costs for raw materials like corn, wheat, cotton and copper have all pulled back recently. Natural gas prices ended the quarter down nearly 4% and oil prices down from $120 a barrel to about $106. After a hiatus because of the pandemic, in-person 4th of July celebrations returned. Multiple Independence Day events in and around San Antonio were held, including the HEB 4th of July celebration at Woodlawn Lake and the 4th of July Jubilee in shirts. Festivities went off without a hitch Monday, including fireworks displays despite drought conditions and the extreme heat. And that's today's 9 at 9. And taking a look outside with live cam, I was talking about those temperatures climbing. We were in the 70s and now we're at 80 degrees. Oh, it just went up to 81. <laughs> Big surprise. We got, uh, yes, more heat headed our way. I know it comes as no surprise to anyone. Temperatures at this hour now sitting at uh, 81 degrees. And uh, we'll see those temperatures rise uh, probably into the 90s by midday. 77 in Kerrville, 73 Rock Springs, 79 right now in Del Rio. And the forecast for the next couple days, a lot of triple digits, uh, 100 today, 100 tomorrow, 101 on Thursday, mostly sunny skies. Uh, and as we look at pollen count, it came in. Molds are moderate at 620. This is a bit of a drop from yesterday and a huge drop from the weekend. These numbers will probably continue to drop. Your case at 12 hour forecast, 89 at 11 o'clock, 92 noon time. We'll call it partly cloudy, but mostly sunny this afternoon. There's your 100 degree temperature, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. We should be right around that mark with southeast Julie winds a little breezy. 10 to 15 miles per hour. We fall into the 90s tonight. What could we see that would change this pattern? A lot of times we look to the tropics. What's going on there? What does the forecast look like for any development? We'll talk about it coming up in just a couple minutes, guys.
Justin, thank you. It's been just over a week since the deadliest human smuggling attempt in our nation's history was discovered right here in San Antonio. Now underway, the task of identifying all 53 victims. Today, we are expecting to hear an update from the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Now, as we wait on the release of the names of more of the victims, the memorial along Quintana Road, where the migrants in an 18-wheeler were found dead, continues to grow. Crosses have been placed alongside the road with the names of some of the victims as well as some of their pictures. Several tents are now up in the area offering water and Gatorade. 19 victims have been conclusively identified according to Bear County officials. 30 others have been potentially identified. Four victims are unidentified. Sandra Grace Martinez has had an opportunity to learn their stories through their families who come here to grieve at this site seen as their final resting place. So while others are putting walls up between two nations, I'm putting a wallop of crucifixes for the people that come here and sacrifice to have a better life. Guatemala's Ministry of Foreign Affairs released the name of two children who are among the dozens of people that died. They also verified 16 of its citizens are among the dead. Well, today we're expected to learn more about two drowning investigations over the 4th of July holiday weekend. One happened in the Guadalupe, Guadalupe River, River rather, near New Braunfels. The second involves a boater on Canyon Lake who still hasn't been seen since he fell in the water. Sarah Costa joins us live this morning with the very latest. Good morning, Sarah. Sarah. Good morning. Such a tragic way for these families to spend their 4th of July holiday weekend. And unfortunately, it's something that we see here all too often. So we're going to start with the drowning in New Braunfels where the victim has been identified as 27 year old Pablo Rodriguez and he is from Austin. Rescue crews in New Braunfels say a man drowned yesterday in the Guadalupe River. New Braunfels police and fire responded to the river along Green Road for a report of a possible drowning. When they arrived, a man was being pulled from the water after going under for an unknown amount of time. First responders administered life saving measures and the man was taken to Christus Santa Rosa Hospital in New Braunfels where he later died. Police say the preliminary information points to an inc this incident being accidental. A local justice of peace ordered an autopsy on the body and this investigation is ongoing. All right, moving on over to Canyon Lake, a family is grieving and waiting for closure after a father went under the water near boat ramp number one Sunday and didn't resurface. Rob Berlingerly's sister posted this widely shared photo online on Facebook asking for volunteers to help look for him. She says her brother was standing on the back of the boat Sunday evening when he picked up his two year old daughter. A wake sent them both tumbling into the water. His sister says the girl's mother jumped in after them. We're passing the baby back and forth, both of them almost drowning to keep the baby alive. A boat came by help save the baby and Priscilla and when they turned around to try and look for my brother he was already down. The family expects the worst at this point. Texas Parks and Wildlife says the game wardens are using sonar to search for him and a dive team is on standby for today. The agency did not directly respond to questions about the family's request for volunteer help, though the Canyon Lake Fire and EMS chief did ask for boaters to avoid the area for safety of divers and rescuers. If any new developments come out of this story, we'll keep you updated, of course, on air and online. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Horror unfolding at Highland Park in Chicago this morning. Police are investigating how a gunman opened fire from a rooftop into a 4th of July holiday parade, killing at least six people and sending hundreds of families running for their lives. New details on the minutes leading up the attack and how President Biden is now reacting. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. A July 4th celebration turned mass shooting. Now in custody, 22-year-old Robert E. Cremo III, the person of interest identified by police hours after the attack. The FBI and local police now investigating how a gunman opened fire from a rooftop into an Independence Day parade in North Chicago, killing six people, sending at least 31 to the hospital, including 25 with gunshot wounds and a child in critical condition. The victims between 8 and 85 years old. And I just looked back at my dad and right behind him, this girl just fell in, in cold blood um, and just died. Another father was watching his grandson and children march in the parade when shots rang out. 
These are the kinds of injuries that are seen in war. And these poor kids and families who went to a parade and then, you know, now they, you know, people just don't feel you can go anywhere. This tragedy, along with the more than 300 mass shootings already this year in the U.S., according to the Gun Violence Archive, sparking outrage from politicians once again calling for tighter gun control. While we celebrate the 4th of July just once a year, mass shootings have become our weekly Yes, weekly American tradition. President Joe Biden reminding Americans that while he has recently signed the first major gun legislation in almost three decades into law, it's still not enough. Nothing guaranteed about our way of life. We have to fight for it, defend it, and earn it by voting. Investigators are waiting on an ATF trace to find out the history of a rifle that was left at the scene. We're told there's still a lot of work left to do to tie the person of interest directly to the shooting. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In your other morning headlines, a prisoner still on the run after a daring escape in the state of Ohio. And the Eiffel Tower in Paris is getting a makeover. The new modern version of the Mayflower just landed at Plymouth Rock, and Joey, its champion again, David Sears, is here to explain all of this. Morning. Morning. After all these years, still hadn't figured out how this guy sucks down so many hot dogs in such <laughs> little time. It's amazing. He's probably not hungry today. No. I would imagine not. We'll get to that in just a second, but first, the hunt is on in Ohio for this guy. 32-year-old Patrick Thomas should not be hard to spot. He's got a P on his tattoo on his forehead. He was able to escape a medical facility in downtown Cincinnati over the weekend. This is some grainy video from inside the facility, but you get the idea. Thomas was able to pick up that chair you saw just a second ago and then threw it out the window and you can see it landing on the street. Now he's back inside the jail and he's tying sheets together and he's going to climb out the window, but he's like a sheet short. So he just drops to the ground. Apparently he hurt himself. He was able to run off though. And police are still looking for him. He's still on the run, but they do think he's injured. As of now, broken glass is cleaned up. The window boarded up. The decision has been made to cover the windows with a mesh so this won't happen again. It is one of the most recognizable and iconic structures in the world, the Eiffel Tower, and it needs little work or maybe a lot of work. It's getting kind of a rusty, so it is about to undergo a paint job, a $60 million paint job. That's a lot of cans of paint. They are looking to get it all spruced up in time for the 2024 Olympics taking place in Paris. It's all coming from the French magazine Marianne. It'll be the 20th time the tower has been painted. One of the managers of the tower, who was not named, said if the builder of the tower, Gustave Eiffel, Eiffel, Eiffel I can't pronounce French too good, visited the place, he would have a heart attack. The tower gets about 6 million visitors a year, so shutting it down for major repairs would be costly, so they will just dress it up a little with some paint. Yesterday, we celebrated America's Independence Day at the same time a high-tech, high-seas watercraft was tracing the original Mayflower's transatlantic voyage. Several amazing things about this particular Mayflower. No captain, no crew, no passengers, and yet it managed the 3,500-mile voyage from sails for power and stars for navigation to solar power AI and real-time data for navigation. The new Mayflower docking next to the replica of the original Mayflower, the Mayflower 400, will continue to sail, collecting data on the climate, ocean pollution, and marine mammal conservation. And finally, still hot dog eating champ, Joey Chestnut. Dude is incredible. He defended his title yesterday. He gorged himself with 63 hot dogs in 15 minutes to win his 15th title. Although he won again, Joey said he still had a little work to do for next year. I'm not full. I, uh, I was exhausted during the contest. I, uh, I got a little bit winded. I, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I slowed down. I, I started off really fast, but uh, I got winded, and uh, it, not, I need to make sure I come back in better shape next year. How do you train to get back in better shape eating hot dogs? <laughs> uh, it, it is a sport. <laughs> Mickey Sudo won her eighth title she crammed down 40 hot dogs she looked like she's in pretty good shape last year she didn't get to compete because she was pregnant so her title was not defended but you know i don't I, what do you how do you work out in the off season for a hot dog eating contest i guess you kind of build up to the day that's my well, guess just like you well, know running that's a marathon just, just eating sorry, lots of hot dogs <laughs> that's just kind of gross <laughs> after a while that's just yeah, I couldn't do it. I've seen how, you know, I know they dip everything in water and try to, yeah. you know, yeah. get the, the bun down yeah. to more like 
soft consistency and things yeah. like that, but still, That's, you're paying for it for days afterwards for sure. I would think. I'd like to know how he feels today. Yeah. yeah. Well, he said he wasn't full in, in the little quick. Quick yeah. clip there. That was yesterday, though. That was right after he got through. <laughs> right. He, he feels his, today? his mind needed time to process. Bring <laughs> leftover hot dogs from the fourth over to the, to the Chestnut House today and see what happens. <laughs> Thank you, David. 9, 12, 81 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. You could soon get your Chick-fil-A mobile order a lot faster. What's a fast food chain is testing out now to make your trip a lot quicker. Small businesses trying to stay afloat. What they're now struggling with to stay in business. That's coming up next. Welcome back. It is 916. Liquidations are now a big business move for stores with excess inventory piling up from retailers like Target and Walmart. The Wall Street Journal says a glut has started to build up everything from kitchen appliances to clothing. In many cases, liquidators are picking up the pallets from ports without the merchandise ever hitting the shelves. Small businesses across the country aren't just struggling with higher costs for products and labor. The rent is also getting too high. Recent survey shows a third of small businesses couldn't pay their rent in May. The U.S. Small Business Association says they generate about 45 percent of U.S. economic activity. And Chick-fil-A is testing a way for mobile customers to quickly get their orders. The fried chicken restaurant chain has put in place new express drive through lanes only for mobile orders and to use them, customers select drive through Express on their mobile app, then visit their chosen restaurant. Once there, they just use the app to scan the QR code connected to the Express lane. drive through Express is available at about 60 restaurants nationwide. That should help with the big line. Hopefully coming to a Chick-fil-A near you. Yeah, fingers crossed. And uh, fingers crossed with the weather, but we're already climbing into <laughs> what we are saying it's going to be triple digits again. As I said to Mike Ozer this morning, we know how the rest of this story goes. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Man, I was sitting there looking through the models this morning, just looking for anything. Give me something. Uh, down the line, maybe next week. Uh, it's too early to say, though. In, in the meantime, we're still dealing with the same old thing. Let me show you the timelines from this morning. We started off with some clouds. Clouds went away, or they're starting to go away, and the sun is popping out and temperatures are on their way up. 81 degrees at the airport, south southeasterly winds at 16. Now we are getting some good breezy winds. That always helps a little bit. They, you know, if you're outside and it's it's brutally hot, at least you have a breeze that helps cool you down some. That's gusting 22 at this hour. And as we look at the satellite picture, you can see the clouds starting to scatter out now. So we've got less cloud cover here over Bear County, a little thicker cloud cover over Rock Springs, Uvalde and Del Rio. So this takes a little more time to dissipate. Temperatures won't be as fast to rise out west, but here in San Antonio and elsewhere, I think we'll get a pretty quick jump in temperatures. Right now, 78 Holota, 75 Burning Stage, 80 Canyon Lake, 84 New Braunfels, 76 in Seguin. Dew points are in the 70s. Uh, they'll drop off a little bit, but we will get a heat index today. So by the time we get into, say, 2, 4 o'clock, that's when the heat index could be up above 100, even through the 6 o'clock hour potentially. So be careful. I know it's the same old story here, but uh, we have to remind you that this kind of heat can be dangerous. And as we look to the north and east, there are heat advisories posted from northeast Texas all the way up to Chicago. So this is where the, the high is kind of centered right now. They're going to get some big time heat in these areas as well. But just because we don't have a heat advisory, again, does not mean this heat isn't dangerous. And this high pressure, well, it dances around a little bit, but it actually strengthens some as we head towards the weekend, which means we're going to get even hotter temperatures, if you can believe that, by Friday, Saturday, and probably Sunday, too, as this thing grows in intensity and really takes hold of our weather. So we always talk about the tropics. This is one place where we can get some relief. There is nothing out there right now. If we're going to get some development in the month of July, these are the typical areas. So we look out to the Lesser Antilles and then sometimes around the Bahamas, we can get some development. And then, of course, the Gulf of Mexico and western parts of the Caribbean. Again, so far, nothing out there, at least uh, over the next couple of days, that we would uh, be worried about any sort of development. Now, sea, sea surface temperatures are plenty warm. We've got uh, temperatures in the 80s in most spots for that water temperature. And this this is more than enough to get activity going. If it does get going, this is more than enough to help it strengthen and that sort of thing. So all the ingredients are there. We're just not getting anything, at least across the Atlantic right now. Now, we do have Hurricane Bonnie in the Pacific. If you remember, 
This started in the Atlantic, crossed over, and is still Hurricane Bonnie, but uh, this is going to move out over open ocean. Should not be a problem. It'll be a Cat 2 storm, then eventually weakening as it moves out into colder waters. And that will be this weekend. So your case at 12 hour forecast, 92 noontime, 94 by 1 o'clock. We're up around 100 this afternoon, mostly sunny. Southeast Julie winds 10 to 15, and then slow to cool down this evening into the 90s with those gusty southeast Julie winds. Extended forecast. So many numbers. Uh, 102 Friday, 103 Saturday, 103 Sunday. I think the weekend potentially could be our hottest temperatures. Uh, 103 actually could be a little conservative. I hate to say that, but uh, the way that high is looking, just it's just brutal. Uh, we'll have some more stats for you on these triple digits coming up here in a bit. But this, is, this is where we are, guys. All right, I'll be uh, only outside in the early morning hours. <laughs> yes, that's smart. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 921, about 81 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, the skyline of downtown San Antonio is getting another addition. This time it's a brand new hotel. The story after the break. New on KSAT.com, a story in partnership with the San Antonio Business Journal, a 10-story hotel is coming Hemisphere. The development plan was just given final approval. It'll be located on South Alamo near Hemisphere in La Vita. The approval comes seven months after preliminary approval was granted. The hotel will be developed by an Indiana-based company called White Lodging. The project will include a nearly 360-room hotel with a rooftop bar, pool, and street-level restaurant. And Case of 12 is giving out a four-pack of tickets to the Superhero Car Show and Comic-Con to several Lucky Case at Insiders. This four-day event happens on August 1st, and this is through August 7th at the Freeman Coliseum and Expo Halls, and it will feature Star Wars star Ewan McGregor, Diane Guerrero from Orange is the New Black, renowned wrestler Hulk Hogan, and more. The sweepstakes is free to enter, and it's exclusively for members of KSET's Insider program. The entry period runs from 2 p.m. on Thursday, June June 30th, so I guess that was last week, to 11.59 p.m. on Thursday, July 14th, which is coming up with winners randomly selected on Friday, July 15th. So you can just head over to our website at kset.com to enter. Obi-Wan Kenobi himself yeah. in the Alamo City. Uh, that's pretty cool, you know, after seeing, I just finished the series. Oh, did you just John finish? Disney. And I remember he was slated to be here in the last year or so, but had to cancel oh, when everybody started every with, with COVID. Yeah. Right, right. 926, 81 degrees. There is more head on GMSA at 9. Flights canceled and no way to get home in the next half hour. What are your rights to make the airlines make it right? Some tips are coming up. Group engineers working for a nonprofit using their skills to help the improve they're trying to improve the current living conditions of migrants on the border that story is up next and a quick check of the roads as we head to break we just looked at the y where things are moving also moving there at i-10 and hackberry new this morning two homes catch fire on the city's far northwest side happened in the 93 and a block of wildstone place near bandera road Firefighters say when they arrive, flames could be seen coming from the homes. No injuries reported. Officials say the homes are uninhabitable. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And another fire this time on the south side leaves four members of a family without a home this morning. This happened in the 700 block of Coplo in a neighborhood between South Flores and Pleasanton Road. Firefighters say that it started just after 3 this morning, quickly taking over the entire house. Everyone got out safely. The home, though, is a complete loss. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. San Antonio police say two women are in critical condition after they were shot overnight. Authorities say a man was also shot and taken to a hospital by a suspect in a silver sedan. Police say it happened around 2.30 this morning in the 7700 block of Ingram Road near Culebra on the west side. SAPD says the shooting happened at an apartment and that one of the women was shot two times in the back. The other was shot once in the chest, the abdomen, and once in the arm. Right now, police don't know what led up to the shooting. Hundreds of books and journals donated from across the country are in the hands of Uvalde school children. This is all part of a nonprofit program called Loving Library. RJ Marquez spoke to the children behind the operation and the people in San Antonio that put these kits together to help support the people in Uvalde. This has been really a labor of love that we were approached by Loving Library. Myra de Hoyos and many others at Education Service Center worked over the past weeks putting together hundreds of grief kits for Uvalde children. Some have coloring books, some have chapter books, some others have 
crayons. The idea to donate books and journals to Uvalde kids came from Arizona-based nonprofit Loving Library. From that day on, I, I felt so sad for them, and their siblings were so brave. 10-year-old Anik Suchdave and 13-year-old Sia Sankaran helped lead the book drive from hundreds of miles away. Brings together a lot of passionate readers and brings the passion together to help the community. The Hoyos said the response and the amount of donations was overwhelming. There is so much gratitude that has come through all of this grief that families are just facing right now. And as you can see, all of these grief kits are all packaged, labeled, and ready to go to the community in Uvalde. They will be going to 578 children across five different campuses there, and they are all separated by age and grade level. These kits were hand-delivered to Uvalde children last Thursday, a small yet significant way to help them cope. I want to help them because they were my age, and I like to kids helping kids. It could have been me there, and or like someone I knew or loved, and I just wanted to help. Just been incredible how kids are feeling this, the impact of this tragedy directly, and it's amazing what they are trying to do to help kids their own age. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with live cam. Wow, now we're at 82 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens in this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these temperatures come up quick uh, this time of day. The clouds starting to clear out, so that always helps those temperatures to really rise. We look across the country, it's not just us that's baking. A large portion of the, uh, the Midwest also seeing some big time temperatures. Look at St. Louis at this hour. It is 90 degrees there. Even Chicago is going to be well into the 90s today. So San Antonio up to Omaha, St. Louis, Chicago, Atlanta, down to Florida, and then, of course, the desert southwest. More big-time temperatures today. It has been Seattle. It has been the big winter all summer long. 54 degrees there, and they're not expected to get all that hot today. Uh, as we look at the satellite picture, we've got some thicker clouds out west, but the clouds really are clearing here around San Antonio and points east. We'll see a mostly sunny day, and temperatures will make their way up to near 100. Here's what's ahead, and I promise I'm not being lazy here, but hot today, hot tomorrow, hot this weekend. That's about all we can give you at this point. Uh, my hope is that something changes next week. Uh, we're going to look at some stats and I'll look down the line, too, coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. How do we know, Justin? Trust me, I, I've trying to come up with something. Here. Okay, all right, we <laughs> believe you. I yeah. don't mean to be skeptical. We're, we're hoping for not so hot yes, next week. Yes, we yeah. are. All right, That's let's fair. check Transcad real quick, see how things are looking out there right now. Looking live at uh, as we scan around town, light traffic at 90 in Medio Creek, I-37 at Jones Avenue, and there's 410 at Calabria. We have a stalled vehicle on the other side of the highway, left-hand shoulder, there's 10 at the Y, closer to downtown. And now to the border, Title 42 has kept thousands of migrants seeking asylum, waiting in one of Mexico's most dangerous cities, Reynosa, Tamaulipas. Those in the shelters have made camping tents their homes for months, some for more than a year now. Support services have been providing for the migrants as they wait to plead their case in the U.S., but three engineers are working to improve public health through their nonprofit. Alicia Barrera met with one of the founders of Solidarity Engineering and has more about their community projects and their main focus. In Reynosa, just a few miles south of Texas, makeshift shelters are home to thousands of migrants. And they're living behind a 10-foot concrete wall because the neighborhoods that land was able to be secured in are very dangerous parts of Reynosa. Chloe Rastatter is one of the founders and field engineers with the nonprofit Solidarity Engineering. Their goal is to mitigate risk and improve living conditions for migrants. will be that drainage canals, emergency evacuation plans, platforms to raise people's tents off the ground so they're not flooded every time it rains. But access to water for showers, washing, cooking and drinking is also a major focus. If it's how are we going to get water into these spaces and where is it going to go after? Because when you have thousands of people living there, that's a lot of gray water and black water to manage. Through donations, Solidarity Engineering has helped provide close to 400,000 liters of potable water and more than 38,000 liters of non-potable water for two of Reynosa's biggest shelters since 2020. We're also not connected to the city electricity grid because we couldn't get access to it. And now we're trying to find, uh, create a, an off-grid solar, solar grid within the camp. 
While the majority of their work is done in Reynosa, important tasks like planning and fundraising is done here in the U.S., which means they have to be strategic about how often and when they cross the border. Of course, it takes hours. It's not a casual you walk there, you walk back. You're going to be in line for hours. And then we spend those other two days, you know, making the maps, reaching out to funders. And with the need for engineers only increasing due to the humanitarian crisis, Rassetter and her team say they have no immediate plans to retreat their efforts on the border. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. It's now 937, 82 degrees. Watching GMSA at 9 and straight ahead, we are taking a look at your rights as a passenger as airlines say travelers can expect flight cancellations to continue through next year. What you need to know next. And welcome back. It is 940. Now to the travel chaos over the holiday weekend. Thousands of flights were canceled or delayed, and it looks like we could see that happen throughout the summer. ABC's Gio Benitez has a look at your rights as a passenger. It's been one of the busiest travel periods the TSA has seen in years, screening a record number of travelers this holiday weekend, with airlines delaying or canceling thousands of flights. I spent $656 on a ticket. And now I'm still trying to find a way to get home. And experts say the staffing issues won't be fixed until at least next year. So what are your rights? Under federal law, if your flight is canceled, airlines are required to give you a cash refund if you decide not to travel. You may have to call the airline and demand to get that cash refund rather than the voucher. Scott Kyes of Scott's uh, Cheap Flight says if you're trying to get a refund online and want that cash back, not a voucher, be careful what you click. An airline might send you an email saying, you know, we're sorry, your flight has been canceled. If you'd no longer like to travel, click here. and We've already processed your travel voucher. You do not have to click there and accept that travel voucher. The Department of Transportation also says consumers are entitled to a refund if an airline made a significant schedule change or significantly delays a flight. But if those delays or schedule changes caused you to miss your hotel check-in or rental car pickup, airlines do not need to pick up your tab for those bills. The travel mom, Emily Kaufman, says that's where travel travel insurance comes in. During these challenging times, you might choose the travel insurance because it covers things like trip delays or cancellations, trip interruption, lost or stolen luggage. So it really does have a great payoff. And no matter what, major airlines, they're not charging change fees. So if you need to change your flight for any reason at any time, you can. But just remember that if your new flight is more expensive, you're going to have to pay the difference. Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Oh, if you're flying anytime soon, they may the force be with you. It yeah. is a jungle <laughs> out there having done it just in the last couple of weeks. I mean, the flight was packed and yes. overall people are being fairly patient. But, you know, we see examples all the time on social media, people just losing their minds. Yeah, that's a, a good way to put it. I mean, I, I've heard actually some people who were supposed to plan summer vacations who mm -hmm. are kind of waiting to the fall to yeah. avoid what's going on right now. Might be a good idea. Let's let's hope it improves by then. But according to Geo, of course, we're going to be waiting through 2023. Justin's here with what we hope is some better news. Right, Justin? Right, right Justin? Uh, right, uh, Justin? Uh-huh. Uh yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to spin it that way anyway. Uh, let's take a look at some numbers here. I think these are interesting. So how many days have we been above 95 degrees since May 1st? 54 days, which is pretty, uh, wow. pretty incredible considering our average high temperature is not even up to 95 yet. It has been an incredible couple of months. And how many days have we been above 100? Well, we've talked about this quite a bit. 26 now. We're well above pace to set the most 100 degree days in a year. We'll see where we land. Things can always change, but so far it's still looking like we're going to keep seeing these numbers come up and i we're putting together a string here of triple digit days uh starting yesterday but really going through much of uh, this week and into the weekend right now we've got uh, 81 degrees at the airport still calling it mostly sunny feels like 85 when you factor in our dew point of 72 so it's pretty sticky out there with south southeast julian was at 16. pretty good breeze and those winds those gusty winds will stay with us most of the day. Temperatures are a little cooler out towards Rock Springs and Del Rio. Clouds a little thicker out there. It's keeping temperatures down some, but where there is more sun, 85 in Pleasanton, 85 Gonzales, 85 in Catula, and a lot of 80s here around Bear County at this hour. It's 81 down there at Stinson. And the heat index, 
Well, that's there too because uh, the air is so thick today. I think we'll see a heat index through most of the afternoon. Humidity does come down a little bit later today, but it feels like 86 right now. Stenson feels like 90 already, and the Braunfels feels like 85 Canyon Lake. We mentioned the wind gusts. They stay right in that range, gusting anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour. So we saw some breezy winds yesterday. We'll see that again today. The forecast high temperatures around the area, 100 here in San Antonio. A lot of triple digits on the map. Hondo, Divine, Pearsall, Pleasanton, even places like New Braunfels will get awful close. And Marcus, 99. The satellite picture shows we have our clouds breaking up, which is why temperatures are on their way up. Uh, partly cloudy skies from San Antonio stretching east to Seguin and Gonzales. And I mentioned that thicker cloud cover out over the hill country at, the, at this hour, but that breaks up as well. Uh, we do have some showers and storms out across far west Texas. That's where they stay today. It's sort of a monsoonal pattern out there. Uh, at least they're getting a little bit of rain. You'll notice there's some showers and storms around New Orleans. A little piece of energy coming around the ridge. It tries to move into our area in the next couple of days, but it just doesn't do much. Not enough there to generate showers and storms for us, and that ridge of high pressure just a little too strong and sticks around for a while. Not only that, uh, it strengthens, which is unfortunate because as it grows in size and strengthens, it just tends to build on itself and really has control of our weather at least through Saturday, Sunday. Uh, as we look into next week, there are some indications that maybe it moves far enough west, opens the door a little bit for some disturbances to work in Texas. We'll see, but we don't want to get anyone ho anyone's hopes up yet because it's just too early to tell. Uh, but as we look at the weekend, just to give you an example, this is Saturday. High temperatures on Saturday, 103 here in San Antonio, 104 in Dallas, and that's underneath that ridge of high pressure. A lot of triple digits, I think, uh, will be in place across the middle part of the country. 92 noontime, 94 by 1 o'clock today. 99, 3 o'clock, 100 by 4 and 5 p.m., mostly sunny. There's that southeasterly breeze we were talking about. And slow to cool down, 93 to 8 o'clock, 90 by 9 p.m. Uh, you may just want to look away at this point. 100 Wednesday, 101 Thursday, 102 Friday, 103 Saturday and Sunday. Um, yeah, it's hard to look at, guys. Sorry. You know, Mark, Mark is looking away. I, and I don't yeah, blame him. It's not it's, personal. I just I get it. try to listen to you yeah. as often as possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oof. Thanks, Jess. Let me yeah. know when it's safe, Steph. It, uh, it's still not safe. Still not safe? Okay. Okay, well, right. the triple digits just left the screen. You're okay. okay, you're good. okay. Yeah, there right. you go. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. You got it. Thank you. On this 5th of July, we are celebrating the 76th birthday of what has become since a long, what has become a poolside mainstay. The bikini swimsuit. ABC's Will Gantz has more. 76 years ago, the bikini made quite the splash when it was first worn in public by Micheline Bernardini at a swimming pool in Paris in 1946. The bikini's designer, Louis Rayard, promoted it as smaller than the world's smallest bathing suit. But the bikini has come a long way since then. Magnificent view. Star of screen <laughs> and pools everywhere. Do you know what happened on Days of Our Lives yesterday? What types of bodies are bikini bodies. All bodies are bikini bodies. We're now kind of seeing this concept that every body is a bikini body. No matter how you look, you can embrace a bikini. And it's really about just wearing swimwear that you feel comfortable in. Emma Seymour joining us from inside Good Housekeeping's textile lab. What are your favorite swimwear trends this summer? I absolutely love high cut swimsuit bottoms and they just make everyone's legs look so long and amazing, super flattering on everyone. And we're also seeing these crossover waistbands where the waistbands twist a bit in the front. I love that look personally. It adds like a bit of a belted touch. While some swimsuits are budget friendly, this monokini under 30 bucks on Amazon, others support in different ways. Under um, wire swimsuit tops, that underwire creates great lift. It's super flattering, comfortable, really no matter your cup size. And like so many other fashion staples, everything old is new again. Also recently, we've been seeing a big return to some old classic swimsuit styles, like the classic Speedo cut swimsuits, really popular. The triangle um, bikini top has become really trendy again, too. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. OK. OK, 949, <laughs> 84 degrees. Still ahead, Minions, The Rise of Gru is the number one movie in the country. If you haven't seen it yet, we're going to give you a sneak peek.
I-52 Minions, The Rise of Gru is the number one movie in America. And Steve Carell talks with Rick Damagella about one of his animated co-stars in The Hollywood Minute. I'm not Minnie. Please stop calling me that. Steve Carell got to work with a person very special to him in Minions, The Rise of Gru, Alan Arkin. He's my idol. I've, I think I've worked with him three or four times now, and I just love him. He's one of my favorite people. I, I, my cell phone in my pocket, and I have, I save voicemails from certain, like my parents. I have some voicemails from them when they were still around. And I have like five voicemails from Alan Arkin because I, I love him and I think he's one of the funniest people in the world. For me, Hollywood is the ultimate dream factory. Downton Abbey, A New Era is out now on 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray and DVD. Among the bonus features are behind the scenes looks at the costumes and the making of the movie within the movie. Are gonna witness an absolute spectacle. Jordan Peele has revealed a website for the theme park from his film, Nope. Jupitersclaim.com features several activities without revealing too much about the mysterious plot of the upcoming movie. Nope hits theaters July 22nd. Noping out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, a recap of the best of the best from Katie's Science Lab. You're not going to want to miss this one. All right, look at the forecast. 100 uh, today, 100 tomorrow, 101 Thursday. We actually see temperatures rise even more, unfortunately, as we head into the weekend. It's probably going to be, we're going to be at our hottest Saturday and Sunday. Good time to go see a movie. I, we saw the rise of Gru yesterday with the mm -hmm. kiddos. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hilarious. I saw yeah. Elvis over the weekend. Yeah. The movie, not actually saw <laughs> he didn't, he didn't Elvis. Hear you, right? That would be a lead story <laughs> yes, for sure. All right, a dog named Savannah became the first dog that we know of to walk around the world. The four-legged adventurer and his owner, Tom Turek, started their trek from New Jersey back in 2015. Together, the pair walked across six continents and 38 countries. They spent most nights camping and walked between 18 and 24 miles each day. The trip took seven years with a few delays from illness and the pandemic. Now, Tursic is the 10th person on record to walk around the world. He was inspired to walk around the globe after a longtime friend passed away. He now says he's focused on writing a memoir about his adventure, which will certainly become a movie Aww. and or a book. Yeah, look at this stuff. But, I mean, talk Savannah. about a way to spend time together, right? Seven years. I love this. I love these pictures. Yeah, great pictures. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, can you see the book now? Yeah, I can see the movie as mm, well. Mm -hmm. Aww, <laughs> look at Savannah. Look at a tiny little tent. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a good pick too. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, do you? I mean, you can't obviously go around the equator. Like, how does that work? Like, where do you? I'm guess sure you they just found jump around? a safe path. And that's part yeah. of the adventure. Yeah. Part of the movie will be one of those maps where it goes. Ding, 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 yeah, ding, we can ding, see where ding, the, everything, ding, everywhere they've gone. Yep. Yeah. I like the I like the picks. Amazing stuff. <laughs> stay yeah. tuned. Stay yeah. tuned. Well, that's all our time for now. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Yeah, have a great Tuesday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow on GMSA at 9. Our crews are back for News Now online and, of course, the news at noon. Thanks for watching.